I feel like there's also the difference of like how you the love language you receive and the lang love yeah, language you give. You so in. true. Yeah. yeah. Because like I don't give X of service. No, oh, absolutely not. <laughs> no. I also don't. <laughs> but I love them. Like. <laughs>Hi Dove, hi Olivia, welcome Hello. to my living room. I am so excited to be chatting with you guys today. Dove is a writer and visual storyteller and Olivia leads community over at Juve Consulting, which I have worked with for a long time and know <laughs> a lot of the people involved with Juve, so that's so very cool. To be here. Thank you for yeah, coming. Yeah, me too. Thank you for coming. No, thank you for having us. Are yeah. you kidding? This is amazing. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited to have you guys here today. And you know, for me, my friends and I are in our early 20s. We are kickstarting our careers, discovering who we are after moving out and it's all a journey. So today with our friends at Bumble who are all about empowerment, we are talking about how we look for personal joy in our dating lives and in our everyday lives. When I think about finding my own sense of joy, I really lean towards exploring my passions and cultivating the things in life that make me really excited. Um, for me, a lot of the time that's like politics and um, reading, discovering how to like psychologically make myself a better person, more intuitive, more self-aware. A lot of those things are how I cultivate my own personal joy in my life separate from having a partner. Mm -hmm. um, but I also know that deep exploration can happen while in a partnership. So when we talk about personal joy, it's really evident that that is different for every single person. You know, an, an example that I have is like some people get upset with me because they're like, you're no fun. You don't like to go out and party. You're 20 years old. You should want to go out and party. For me, that's like not my personal sense of joy. Like everyone has different ideas of fun and that's totally normal and completely valid. So what is that for you guys? Well, first of all, I really, really, really resonate with what you just said. I just graduated from college, right? Um, and my entire senior year at USC, I was working full time. Same thing before that too. I was working throughout my entire school experience and mm -hmm. I feel like working was such a big part of my life yeah and like I look back on it now and I'm like did I want to go out more did I want to party more did I want to you know have more of like the classic college experiences right which sometimes the answer is yes but yeah. at the end of the day like I absolutely loved what I was doing even if it wasn't necessarily like a traditional sense of fun yeah and I think for me the biggest thing is always who I'm doing it with yeah. rather than what I'm doing yeah um, and so finding people that you know I love to spend time with or love to collaborate with, yeah. whether it's work or fun or friends, um, always brings me personal joy, like you're saying. You know, what I realized is that like, I've developed such a habit towards centering my life around work. Like I live to work, not work to live, which mm. is like something I'm currently mm -hmm. dealing with in therapy yeah. because it's actually a really unhealthy mindset to have um, when like your only goal and source of personal value comes from your work. Yeah. But, um, it's made me realize that like my idea of fun is just very different than like the normal pathway of like young 20 year olds ideas of fun, like a college student ideas <laughs> yeah. of fun. And like, sometimes yeah. I do feel regret like, oh, maybe I should be like going out to this party on Friday night with my friends. But at the end of the day, like I would genuinely and honestly find much more joy in staying home mm -hmm. with my boyfriend or my best friend or even alone and like eating cookies and watching a movie while snuggled up with my dogs. Shout out. Yeah, like, that is just perfect. My job is something that I like love doing. Like I, if I don't want to do it, I'm probably not going to be good yeah. at it. Okay. <laughs> and that is just, I've always been like that. It's a good rule to I live by. I don't yeah. really do things that I don't want to do. And that is a big part of how I find my personal happiness. Like yeah. just making my life, like setting my life up in a way that I'm always doing something that I want to be doing. Yeah. So like for work, I, you know, I was always into like photo video stuff and mm -hmm. I went to school for it. And now I just like make videos and yeah. take photos and do stuff like that for brands. Yeah. Another way I find personal happiness is sort of reconnecting with parts of myself that I suppressed when I was younger. Like yeah. I used to love Hello Kitty and Sanrio stuff yeah. and everybody would make fun of me for it. And I like, I go out and I'm, obviously like older and very tall and I'm just like buying a bunch of stuffed yeah. animals and like I changed the seats in my car to pink like just little things like that yeah. make me happy so I yeah. like it's not about like what other people think yeah. or 
you know, how they would feel about doing something for themselves. It's like, what makes me happy and what yeah. would I like? And what do I want to surround myself with? And a big part of that is people and things that I, you know, enjoy, didn't, yeah, yeah get to enjoy <laughs> when I was younger. Yeah. yeah, I think that's really interesting because I think a lot of the times, like, we are so quick to wanting to grow up when we're children mm -hmm. um, that we like lose that sense of like childhood optimism and passion yeah. and like f fervence for life. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's so interesting that like you're just so open about embracing that. I want to start doing that you and like should. reconnecting with yes. my inner child because I think that's part of the reason why like I'm so attached to my dogs mm -hmm. is because like I grew up having dogs and they were like my best friends mm -hmm. and I would play with them and they were everything to me and like I think that is my like pivot into like reconnecting with my inner child is like yeah. being my like nine-year-old self with my oh, dogs. Oh yeah, absolutely. I went and got another guinea pig. Like <laughs> I haven't had one since I was little. I'm a grown woman with a guinea pig. Like usually kids have those and I just love her. Like yeah. I'm like, wow. Like I have these new pets that, yeah. you know, different from the ones I had when I was younger. And I'm like, as an adult, I'm experiencing <laughs> these new animals. And yeah. it's like, oh. I love that's, it. That's, yeah. When I was younger, I was so focused on growing up. Yeah. Me too. That yeah. I don't even know, like, should I go horseback riding? Should I like, yeah. <laughs> anything like, you think of, anything like, you think of. Best Day by Taylor Swift, because that's what I did in like the, actually, wait, that's actually true. I started crying in an Aritzia the other day because Best Day by Taylor Swift came on. Aww. And that is what I sang in my fifth grade talent show Aww, um, so with cute. like a guitar and everything. And it was just like this moment where I was like, I think I need to try something on because I just need to close the dressing room doors Aww. and like cry for a second. Yeah. Because I was like, oh my God, like time is really passing, mm -hmm. right? And I'm like so yeah. in the place where like I imagined myself yeah. as when yeah. I was like, in fifth grade singing about having the best day and yeah. like hanging out with my family like i just i just think it's amazing to like have those moments to kind of look back and think about younger mm -hmm. you yeah. yeah and like reflect on like what would she want right now or like yeah. oh absolutely like yeah. yeah she'd be so proud of us I oh like, totally yeah i really forget to do that i think like because of my like workaholic tendencies i really am constantly like striving for better and more success and just I'm striving for everything work oriented that I forget that like I've come so far in such a short amount of time that like my little self would be like wouldn't even be able to imagine yeah. the life that I have now mm -hmm. and it's so important to like remember that and have those moments of gratitude and just like really being present. I have your tweet on hand. Mm -hmm. This tweet <laughs> I'm obsessed with, and it really does connect with what you were talking about earlier. You said, I used to want to fit in more than anything, and now I'm grown, and I'm finally reconnecting with the parts of myself I had to suppress to avoid being bullied growing up. <laughs> Shut up and move. <laughs> I love it. I love all You're her bold. tweets, by the way. I retweet like every single thing, except oh the ones gosh. about guinea pigs, because it's just not relatable to me personally, but maybe after this I might be getting a guinea pig. <laughs> sure, they're so sweet. Like what prompted that tweet? I thought, you know, bullies would kind of go away yeah. after, mm -hmm. you know, hi, not even high school, like middle school. Yeah. Didn't really have them in high school. And then like, now that I'm, I, I guess in the public eye, like yeah. I have them again. And I'm like, yeah. I used to get so, so upset when somebody, some random person online would have something negative to say about me or be like, oh, I think you're stupid. I think you're annoying, like yeah. whatever. And um, I did at first let it mess with my self-esteem and I tried to change myself and be like, okay, well, I don't yeah. want to be, you know, someone who's perceived as annoying and that didn't work for me, yeah. you know? <laughs> I'm like, because <laughs> I'm like, okay, if you're annoyed by my actual self, like you probably just are not somebody that I would want to yeah. be around in real life anyway. Yeah. Like we'll never know each other, we'll never be friends. It's kind of like, I'm more concerned now about like what I think yeah. of myself and how I feel about myself yeah. and how I want to exist in the world rather than how others are perceiving me. Yeah, I made that like my number one priority. Just growing That's up, really I, was nice. I was not nice to myself. People were yeah. not nice to me, so I like, you know kind of would suppress everything to become like somebody who was just kind of there and not you know being picked on bullies never go away yeah never After i really thought yeah <laughs> yeah and like as you as you get older like the bullying is different it's yeah. not the same as it used to be like people be like haha you're ugly it's like now it's like i like you as a person i don't like like and then there's you know crazy people on the internet of course that are like mm -hmm. i know where you live like i'm gonna find you yeah and that it's just like you're you guys are people do a lot for yeah. 
you know, a little bit of attention. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, I just try and ignore stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, like for me personally, and I think that a lot of people might deal with this, especially as we're such like an internet focused culture mm -hmm. is I spend a lot more time thinking about how others perceive me mm -hmm. than I think about how I perceive myself. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that lends itself to like a whole bout of anxiety yeah. if I'm not performing the way that like my imagined ideal self yeah. should be performing. And I think it's such a like dangerous trap to fall into. Oh yeah. It's really hard to get out of that mindset yeah. too. Like it took me so long yeah. to kind of be like none of that matters yeah. and it, it like it seems like it does and it seems like it's like the end of the world if people if you're not you know perceived by everyone as who you want yeah. to be perceived as it really it really does not matter so yeah. getting like accepting that and like seeing that for yourself and realizing like there's so much more to yeah. who I am than like how others are perceiving me like how you feel about yourself is so, so important, like more yeah. important than anything else. Yeah. And that's how you get, that's how you get far in life. Like yeah. by, as cliche as it sounds, like by believing in yourself yeah. and like by really liking yourself. And yeah. so what I did is like, I tried to become somebody that I would really, really like because I spent Aww. so much time not liking myself. Yeah. I just adopted this mindset of like, yeah. I am great. Like, you know, I think that little me when mm -hmm. I was 10, this is exactly who I wanted to be. Yeah. So I'm like, what can I do to make her proud? It's not about these other people like, oh, you need to prove them wrong. I mean, yeah. you will prove them wrong <laughs> by, but you will prove them wrong by making your like 10 year old self happy yeah. and like connecting with yourself and, sure. you know, being somebody in the world that you would want to see in the world, somebody yeah. that the world needs. I think it's really important to find that love within yourself, to find that belief in yourself before you like enter the dating world and before you definitely search for a partner definitely. are you in a relationship <laughs> it's complicated wait i love that answer <laughs> to be determined let's unpack that <laughs> but you're in a relationship i am i am so did you ever come into conflict with that idea or did you already like have that in yourself before you went and got a partner how did that work for you well i think one of the most important things to to know before getting into a relationship is that you have to love yourself, yeah. right? And not be looking for someone else's validation, yeah. right? Because at the end of the day, if you're, you, you can do whatever you want to get other people to like you, but yeah. if you can't look in the mirror and say that you like yourself or that you love yourself or that that little girl would be proud, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Then it doesn't matter who your yeah. partner is or, or how many partners you've had or how many people want to go on dates with you or how many people are in your DMs, right? And so for me, I am in a very happy relationship now and I think that's like a huge part of of why this relationship is working mm -hmm. for me is that I it wasn't something that I rushed into. It wasn't something that I felt like I needed. Mm -hmm. It was just something that happened and kind yeah. of fell into my lap. It's mm -hmm. kind of, I, I was just very casually on dating apps, right? And I actually met my boyfriend Jackson on a dating app, oh, cute. Um, which was just an awesome experience and not something that I ever thought would happen. Yeah especially not for me like I'm meeting new people in my everyday life all the time like this is so random when I, when I was like seven my grandpa like gave me this like wisdom that was like you truly have to love yourself before other people can love you yeah. because to be loved is to be known mm. and in order to be known you have to know yourself very true yeah have I don't know it's, it's hard first. though it's yes. hard oh it's it very hard a I made the mistake to get there I made the mistake before like before I you know was really comfortable with myself and liked myself I would try and like you know find a boyfriend to be like oh well I think I feel like if somebody else is obsessed with me yeah then maybe you know I'll feel some sort of like love then. And I yeah. was looking for love from myself, not, well, I was in need of love from myself yeah. and not from some other person that like, you know, may or may not actually love me. And then like placing all of my value in like what a partner thought about me mm -hmm. um, did not work out well. Yeah, like you guys absolutely. are younger than I am and yeah. like you seem to have known this. Uh, but I didn't at the time, yeah. so no, but I, I definitely made like the mistake. A really common thing, though, is that mm -hmm. you're sort of in need of, you know, love, and you look for it from other mm -hmm. people instead of looking for it. Yeah, from it's yourself. like right there. You would think it's so Absolutely. obvious, and it's like it's not always easy, and it is not always, you know, obvious like how you should 
it's hard to yeah. know when you're healed. You Absolutely. Know? Yeah. And so, I'm yeah. by far, I'm not. so far from being there, by the way. Like, <laughs> yeah. I do not mean to get preachy on anyone at all because yeah. at the end of the day, there's like, it's truly a journey and there's so, Definitely. so, so far to go yeah. when it comes to self-love. It's like a lifelong thing. I feel like it's important to note that like this process is not linear either. Yeah. Like no. there is no like, I see the end point, mm -hmm. I will be there in like a month. Like yeah. that's just not how it works. I mean, like I have been in a relationship for two years now and there are moments in that relationship period where I see myself like not loving myself the way that I should and it yeah. actually like affects my relationship. Mm -hmm. It's really evident how it yeah. does, no, which is like crazy. I Absolutely. had that yeah. mind blowing moment one time where I was being really, really, really hard on myself for like a couple weeks long and my boyfriend was just like, what is happening? Like, you're not allowing love into your life. Like, you're not accepting it within yourself in that way. And thus, like, you're not accepting it from other people. And um, then I, like, worked on myself and it got better. And, like, we've been together this whole time. But that just goes to say that, like, this process is really, like, circular. Yeah. There are moments where, like, you're forward and then you're backward. But, like, it's all about the growth at the yeah. end of the day. I think every fight or disagreement that my boyfriend and I have had hasn't never come from anything that was like actually wrong. It yeah. truly, like if I take a step back and I'm like, mm, thinking about from? it, yeah. it was definitely coming from my own insecurities, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And so I think a lot of times, like not knowing that, you can kind of self-sabotage yourself. Yeah. And oh yeah. Like, oh, it's how this person's treating me or it was this little tiny thing that made me blow up, right? Yeah, and I love that you met your boyfriend on an app. That's <laughs> adorable. Um, <laughs> You know, it just goes to show that, like, when you are at peace with yourself, love will come in ways that you really would never have expected. I've spent so much time on dating apps, but mostly just for fun, as a game almost. Like, my friends and mm -hmm. I would, like, airplay our phones onto the screens yeah. and, and, like, <laughs> have so much fun with it, right? And, and I think that's, like, that's such so a fun. great way to think about dating in general mm -hmm. is to sort of not care so much about yeah. what other people think mm -hmm. and really make sure that you like yourself before looking for validation Definitely. Some, yeah. from someone else, right? Definitely. Yeah. And, and before trying to find that out in the world and trying to change yourself yeah. for other people because that's at the end of the day, not how you're gonna find love uh, if that's what you're looking for, but. Yeah, and dating is supposed to be fun. It should it be. Is. It absolutely yes. should be. Yeah. 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 You can't care too much about what other people think. No, yeah. definitely not. And it's like, you know, dating is not... Dating's not the most important thing no. in life. It's you not know? the end-all, be-all. Yeah, it is not the end of the world if, like, somebody doesn't like you or if something doesn't work out or if you're, like, too different from someone else. Just, it's always good to remember, like, don't make dating your entire life. You know, it's just supposed to be a part of your life, not, like you said, the end all be all. Yeah. So, um, it's fun. It's it's fun to be like, you know, yeah. lighthearted with it and yeah. just casual sometimes. Yeah. Honestly, I love that Bumble allows women to make the first move, so they can go the pace that feels comfortable to them. Um, you can take breaks, you can start the conversation when you want, and you can specify exactly what you're looking for in your profile, which brings me to my next point, attachment styles and love languages. <laughs> Sometimes it's great to list this in your profile too, and we just took the attachment style quiz, but I'm just gonna kind of tell you what the different attachment styles are so you can have it working in your brain already. The first one is secure, it's the most ideal. Anxious is the second one, the avoidant attachment style, which is the third, and the last one is disorganized, which is basically exhibiting a mixture of both avoidant and anxious. So what did you guys get? <laughs> so I'll just come clean. Mine was definitely wrong. I got secure <laughs> attachment, but I think it's because I was trying to do it in like five minutes. Yeah. But I, I think it's true that my parents were really, really, really supportive, and I was super blessed that way. Mm -hmm. That. My family has always been there for me and I had very present parents growing up. Their love is like something that I really look up to, but I definitely resonate with the sort of anxious attachment style of like, when I'm going on dates and, and you know meeting new people, it doesn't really matter. I think I'm very secure in that sense, but then things kind of change once I actually start to need and depend on another person yeah. and I, I sort of 
gain that level of trust with someone else, but then get a little bit more anxious about it. Yeah. And I definitely think that's something that I'm still working through Yeah, for sure. I also got secure attachment style. I don't think mine is We're wrong. So cool. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, well, Flex. no, 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 but I used Shade. to be, I used to be anxious. I was, I was um, anxious avoidant attachment mm. style mm. and like, I did have a lot of love from my parents and family growing up, but I had that disconnect like where it was it was with friendships mostly like mm. people I yeah. I had such a hard time making friends cuz I was yeah. Anyway. <laughs> um but I do think that I mean an anyone can grow, yeah, you know. For you sure. can you can go from one attachment style to another maybe you even like go back something happens yeah. to you in a relationship and you're like I'm not feeling so secure anymore like yeah. I'm anxious I'm avoidant now because of this other thing Absolutely. that happened to me and yeah. I've definitely flip-flopped back and forth a couple times and now I'm very happy that I'm in a place where I'm like secure and currently like I am not in a relationship but I'm seeing someone mm -hmm. and I'm being like very healthy about it Good. which is like the first it's the first time I have been like this I'm making sure that I have like a healthy emotional connection with this person and like a healthy, like I'm attached to them in a healthy way mm -hmm. rather than like an obsessive way or an anxious way. Well, congratulations to both of you. <laughs> Even if you think yours is wrong, it probably has a little bit of right. truth yeah, in it. Yeah, it definitely has a little bit of truth. <laughs> yeah. Um, a little bit. Very healthy. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Attachment styles are really important, but so are love languages. Absolutely. I feel like that's such mm -hmm. a big topic of conversation when it comes to like dating and relationships what are your love languages and do they ever like interfere with your dating life if someone has a different one than yours is that a deal breaker is it a nick okay so for me physical touch is by far my love language mm -hmm. like i took that quiz and i love taking quizzes by the way <laughs> so everyone should definitely take the attachment styles quiz i think it's going to be linked below yeah um but the love languages one is by far my favorite i've made everyone in my entire life take it <laughs> i am such a physical touch person um, and my boyfriend is not. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of a point of contention a lot yeah. of times because I feel like that's when I get like that anxious yeah, attachment style sure, is when like sure. I don't feel like I'm being loved, loved the way yeah. that I the way that I want to or the way that I need to, right? Yeah. His style is definitely more so like acts of service and mm -hmm. quality time. Interesting. And that's something that we chat about all the time. That's good. Healthy communication. Healthy communication <laughs> can also be a like, love language, I yes. think. <laughs> yeah, I mean, me and my boyfriend had this conversation like way earlier in our relationship and it does kind of like tend to come up later on in the relationship, especially when you have different love languages. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mine is really focused on words of affirmation, mm. which I think is so interesting, especially when I compare it to my attachment style and, um, you know, looking back at like childhood, I don't know, everything like kind of all forms together, like words of affirmation from years of talking poorly about myself. Mm. So I like crave words of affirmation from others to reassure love. That's so love. interesting. Mm -hmm. For him, his is physical touch. And mine like is, but like isn't as much. Like mm. I'm just totally fine if we're just laying there together, not even touching and just like, talking about how much we love each other and he's like no I need to be you, like you need to be like inside <laughs> me like within inside my shirt like <laughs> um so our physical touch and words of affirmation sometimes like come into conflict but mm -hmm. it's all about like talking about it and making sure that both needs are being met mm -hmm. yeah absolutely yeah yeah now that I made everyone literally all my friends everyone in my family I made everyone take it and I always keep picking up on things that I'm like, oh, that really is your love language. Like I've mm -hmm. had roommates where I was like, wow, no wonder you're doing all the dishes all the time. Yeah. Like your love language is acts of service. Mine like, this is, makes so much sense. I don't, I feel like there's also the difference of like how you, the love language you receive and the lang love yeah. language you give. You so in. true. Yeah. yeah. Because like, I don't give acts of service. No, no, absolutely not. No. I also don't. <laughs> but I love them. Like, that's, that's my love language, yeah, acts really. of service. Acts of service is my love language. Please do things for me. Like, you have to make sure that you're like loving your partner yeah. or whoever, or other people, like your friends, whatever, in their love language so that yeah. they know that you're like attentive to them yeah. as a person, like their needs, how they need to be loved mm -hmm. and all that. So true. Um, but I think I show love in gifts. Like I Same. love to give people gifts. Same. I'm just like, I was thinking of you. I saw this, this is what I just, I just thought you should have this. Like yeah. I love to bring people back little gifts from Me places too. that I go. 
um, mm -hmm. stuff like that. I'm so. gonna need your guys' help then because my boyfriend's birthday is coming up, and oh, I'm oh. really good at gift I'm giving. So good. Yeah, I can pick okay, out. Okay, wait. You and I were gifts. tag teaming. <laughs> no, we, we we'll need to you. chat. We need yeah. to chat. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm so nervous when it comes to gift giving. Like yeah. that's when I get really concerned. I'm like, oh my god, what if they don't like it? What if they yeah. are gonna get me a better gift? This is also like the first birthday. I'm in like, our they better get me a better mm. gift. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Thank you guys so much for coming on this show. I learned a lot personally about myself and about you guys and also how to like be better moving forward. Um, I think it's really important for everyone listening as well to recognize the importance in finding your own personal joy before you even like step foot into the dating world, before you get in a committed relationship, making sure you know yourself, making sure you explore your passions and your curiosities and you are loving yourself the way you deserve to be loved before you seek love from someone else. Absolutely. Do you guys have any other final notes before we say goodbye? Even with love languages or attachment styles, knowing myself means that I also know how I'm feeling, right? Mm -hmm. And being able to communicate that to my partner yeah. or even my friends or my family or whoever it is that I'm you know spending time with that day yeah. is so important because then it shows them how you need to be loved and yeah. maybe that you need a little bit extra care and affection that day mm -hmm. which yeah. is usually me um yeah. same <laughs> usually I'm like hey me too super anxious today <laughs> <laughs> please hold me <laughs> I, please. I would like to be held <laughs> Thank you guys so much again for joining me today. I had a lot of fun. And before we wrap up, just kind of give me your like quick rapid fire things that bring you joy on a daily basis. My little brothers, <laughs> my family, my alone time by myself, my morning routine. Um, the matcha that I had this morning <laughs> brings me, brought me a lot of personal joy actually. The lunch that I'm about to have after this, nicies mm -hmm. like I talked about, um, my boyfriend, yeah. uh, meeting new people, and this show too. I, I think this was an amazing experience. Thank you so, so, so much for having us. Thank you for um, This was absolutely awesome and hopefully we can continue this conversation soon. Yes. Because there's so many things that are gonna bring us personal joy going forward yeah. that we haven't even experienced yet. Yeah. yeah. Definitely, thank you so much for having me as well. Um, as for me, I am definitely also looking forward to lunch. <laughs> um, very excited to get home and paint and read and take my dog for a walk um, on the beach. That's his Aww. favorite. He loves to just like run through the sand, um, see my guinea pig, talk to my little sister, just stuff like that. Yeah, everyday joys. Mm -hmm. It's the little things. Little things, things really, little really. Things. Like sitting down and like working on a painting is just so, calming for me. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to Looking For. I am Amelie Zilber and I will be back with another episode next week brought to you by Bumble right here on the Past Your Bedtime YouTube channel.